Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Caring Medical Studios here in Fort Myers, Florida. We have a special guest today, author, motivational speaker, teacher, and CEO of Caring Medical, and who also happens to be my wife of, well, I guess it'll be 36 years this year. Wow. Well, you must have, we must have gotten married <laughs> when you were six. That's right. Uh, Marianne Hauser. <laughs> Uh, ever since I've known Marianne, uh, she's cared about nutrition. She was raised in a house where even for breakfast when you were growing up, you had homemade meals. So food is such a passion for Marianne. So she's going to share her passion for that. I just want to introduce this part, this talk with the notion that there's five main causes of disease. So normally when I teach this, the number one cause, well, not the first cause of disease is genetics. Second cause is food, which we'll go back to. Third cause is what you think. Mm -hmm. Fourth cause is what you hear or say. And then uh, the fifth cause is what you do. Because everything we do, everything we say, everything we hear, everything we eat for that matter, either gives us health or gives us disease. And your passion has always been simply that people would cook their own food instead of going out. But I was raised in a house where we ate a lot. And to this day, I still like fried chicken. But why don't you talk about the doctor and dietitian? Because this, uh, this started when we had our charity clinic in a very rural town in Thebes, Illinois. And for the newspaper, back in the 90s, we had a column right. called The Doctor and the Dietitian. Yeah, back in the 90s, uh, this little local newspaper asked us to write a column called The Doctor and the Dietitian. We came up with that, yeah. looking at uh, nutrition and medicine kind of combined and how could people work on their health. So we started the column back then. And then we have resurrected it over the last, I don't know, it's been six years that it's been in the local Southwest Florida paper now too. and. Uh, we talk about all sorts of topics there and um, you know some of our patients who come in have read the articles and they really enjoy it so uh, you can find those on islandsun.com and they're also on hauserdiet.com the articles are housed there so if you want to read them they're there but we talk about things that you know we encounter in everyday life and ways that we ourselves work on our health and um, yeah it's great it's great fun now you uh, always loved to cook and the, it, it was your passion for food really that led you into dietetics and then you were a dietitian until you were recruited by your husband because he was floundering in the <laughs> business of medicine so in 1995 you actually left your dream job uh, in, in on the nutrition support team at Heinz VA Medical Center so you were basically the highest level dietitian there could be in the hospital because you took care of critically ill Mm -hmm. patients and that was hard to transition into you know the business of medicine but you're just a tremendous leader and you lead caring medical in so many ways and part of it is your office you actually your office now is right by our kitchen at caring medical and you know, the other day you know we had we have an avocado tree you we pick the avocados and you made guacamole so you're right. trying to influence even the staff right. to eat healthy right yeah that is so true. Well, and it's a lifestyle. It's not just, um, mm -hmm. you know, go on a diet. So that's yeah. what I'd like to talk about and how food yeah. really influences your health. But even, I mean, you work full time, but yet every night we have fresh meals. So how do you do that? Mm -hmm. It's planning. Uh, you know, I'm obviously an organized person. I like to plan things and I uh, don't like to just go by the seat of my pants because otherwise then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, on the weekend, I'm uh, getting my groceries and I've moved toward um, online grocery shopping where I have the major groceries delivered because that saves me time. I use misfitmarket.com, which is like misshapen vegetables and produce and then now they're adding other things, but that helps out local farmers who are organic farmers who maybe the shape of, a, of an avocado or a eggplant or something doesn't fit like the grocery store so they sell them mm -hmm. at a reduced rate so you save money plus uh, you're helping out the local farmer so those get delivered on Saturday mm -hmm. and I choose what I'm gonna order you know based on what I'm gonna make for the next week so it is a system you may not think it is and then I also use like a, a grass-fed meat um, co-op of local 
farmers uh, to yeah. get my meats because you're a, you're a carnivore. Yeah. And uh, those get delivered flash frozen. So then on Sunday, typically my day is I'm planning out the meals for the week and I uh, cook some of the things that'll get us through like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then Thursday will be something that I'll actually make uh, that day. And then Friday we may or may not go out or we might have like a charcuterie board or just something mm -hmm. simple that day. So I, I have a plan. They're very simple. That's a lot of things I talk about in the newsletter is ways to make things fast, mm -hmm. like under 30 minutes. It's not taking a long time with a bunch of ingredients. Uh, one of my favorite things to make is what we call the green stuff. Okay. So you take like any herb you have, mostly basil. It's kind of a take on pesto, mm -hmm. but it's uh, pesto, fre or, or fresh basil, fresh oregano, like 10 cloves of garlic. Uh, sometimes I'll put mint, parsley, uh, cilantro, and I use like a Cuisinart chopper. I chop up all the herbs, chop up the garlic. Then I just zest one lemon. I squeeze the lemon juice in there. Then I put like a teaspoon of raw honey and a splash of uh, red wine vinegar, and then the rest is olive oil. And I buy my olive oil also from an organic um, Italian or Greek um, online source, and I get, a, get it in cans because we, we eat a tremendous amount of yeah, olive oil. That's true. And then, you know, it's tremendously healthy for you, so, you know, I'll, I'll have it on, you know, a gluten-free bagel or a piece of toast or put it on salmon or fish yeah. or other fish or chicken. Um, basically, you can eat it on anything. And so I've taught a lot of uh, friends how to make it, and they make it too. So that's one of the reasons for having the hydroponic, because I can grow a whole bunch of herbs. And we make like five jars of that a week and eat it almost the whole thing in a week, because we're just putting it in so much. Because, yeah. you know, good fats are, you know, like people think fat's bad, but the olive oil, a good organic, yep. um, uh, extra virgin olive oil cold pressed is very very healthy for you. I would say too like you use food as a ministry so why don't you talk about that because I would say you have the gift of hospitality like you actually love um, having people over and I would even say that you design the office with the kitchen in mind even our office here and then the home you know the kitchen was a very important part because so much friendships and yeah that that's true it's uh, I got that from my mom I mean yeah. my mom loved having people over like I tell you uh, like yeah. when I was in high school like the kids all came over and my mom would make like a homemade lasagna or sloppy joes or something and we would play games and you know once you share meals together it's uh, you yeah. know you've you've taken your relationship to yeah. it's, level. it's different yeah. than just yeah. you know, being at a restaurant. So I think one of the things like even the current society, you know, we've gotten so socially inept and we don't actually yeah. have real relationships with real people. They yeah. think they have friends and they're all on social media or different things. And yeah. so when you invite someone over to your home, even if it's a really simple meal, it's um, it yeah. just takes the relationship to a new level and you, you have like a bond and a yeah. camaraderie. And even like this yeah. weekend, we had three birthdays we celebrated. Mm -hmm. and Tremendous amount of laughing and um, yeah. sharing and really close fellowship. So um, I, I love pe having people over and I, I encourage other people to do it and not, not even like worry so much that it has to be some fancy thing. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of like, bringing people together. One of the things we've enjoyed is different cycling tours. You know, we've done different si bike, like bike around Italy and this and that. And then what you appreciated too was the simplicity of the ingredients but the deliciousness of the flavors so why don't you explain that like it things can just have a few ingredients but if the ingredients are fresh the flavors are all there right i mean that 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 struck us tremendously when we went on that cycling tour where we had it one of our guides was a a native italian and he would share recipes with us and then also took us sort of behind the scenes to some of the chefs and then even that latest one with the neighbor just watching homemade pizza being made you know and we've done that too where it's it's literally olive oil garlic lemon and herbs yeah. like and usually fresh herbs yeah. and uh, you know the quality of the actual product like it's homegrown tomatoes vegetables mm -hmm. the pro the protein is is you know like we can get fish here from from you know the gulf of mexico so when you have that, it's like you don't yeah. even need that much uh, yeah. additional. And then cooking it, obviously, well. 
And then, of course, together we ran a comprehensive natural medicine clinic for many years. I mean, obviously, we now focus on structural medicine, but a lot of people don't realize in our past we've treated basically every human disease. So when somebody's fatigued, the first thing to do is, you know, get your body weight to where it should be, you know, get physically fit, and then use food as medicine. So why don't you explain that, like how you use food as medicine? Well, that, that's kind of why I put this here first, because, you know, people cannot just eat any old thing and think like it's going to have no effect on them. Yeah. So one of the things that you used to say to the patients all the time is what you eat needs to give you energy, not take away energy. Long, long lasting energy. Yeah. You know, I was traditionally trained as a dietitian, and you basically are trained to put everybody on the same diet. If you have uh, heart disease, you go on the low cholesterol, low sodium diet. And you know, if you have uh, diverticulitis, you can't eat any seeds and you can't eat any nuts. You know, and and just diabetes, like the whole way they treated diabetes was ridiculous. <laughs> like it was a high carb diet from the American Diabetes Association and. The whole problem with diabetes is you can't process carbohydrates, you don't have enough insulin. So early on in my career, it was just like, this is not right, like what, what is this? So uh, we went to a natural medicine conference and both of our eyes were open to, to realize mm -hmm. that, you know, the way the body works is individual as, as much as like your fingerprint is individual, mm -hmm. the hairs on your head are individual. So each person yeah. actually has a different uh, physiology or metabolic yeah. type and what we now call the Hauser diet type. So we developed our own method of, of figuring out like how a person should eat. And we've reversed like many things, like we've improved uh, women's fertility, we've reversed endometriosis and you know like uh, menstrual irregularities. Uh, I remember my first cardiac patient at Caring Medical in Illinois putting them on a high protein, high fat diet thinking, I hope this works because this is so counter to what I was trained in. And I'm talking to the patient, I can still even see it. He was getting IV chelation at the same time. And literally within a month, like his numbers went yeah. down and improved dramatically. So um, it really does matter what you eat. Mm -hmm. And you know, we went on a weekend getaway um, a couple weeks ago and you know, some of the people in the car wanted to stop at, at a fast food place. and. You know, I, I just said I'm, I'm, I'm not eating it. So, yeah. like, I had some stuff in, that I brought, like gluten-free crackers and some cheese and things like that, and I'm just going to eat that. Like, I'm, I'm just, it's to that point where it's not going to go it. in my it's body. It's not worth it's it. Not to, worth it's it. not worth it to feel bad. And the other thing for myself was, like, I used to get migraine headaches, and I was obviously one of the first people to treat, be treated by you in my neck for migraine headaches. But then there were weird times, like, early on in our marriage where, like, some, we just be totally fine and then all of a sudden I'd have a massive migraine and we, we ended up realizing it was from MSG mm -hmm. in food. So my point is eating as a lifestyle, it's, it's not a diet. So you need to, like I gave the example of going yeah. on, the, on the road trip and I'm not gonna eat those foods, yeah. it's just not gonna happen. So you have to plan, you have to purchase foods that are healthy for you and you don't have that other stuff in your house. Yeah. So you have lots of you know, vegetables, fruits, whole grains and a variety of proteins and that's how you eat. So these are some of the benefits of healthy eating and like we said we had a natural medicine clinic for many years so there were many reasons that we could uh, put people on a certain w uh, way to eat and, and their whole disease process would change. Yeah. So it helps healing obviously patients who are undergoing prolotherapy they need to give their body the nutrients that they need in order to heal. Uh, it improves digestion and bowel habits. Like I can't even tell you how many people say they're constipated. Yeah. And you know you're supposed to go to the bathroom number two uh, after every meal. Yeah. Like and a kid, like a little right. baby or so something. So it's it's at least two two times a day, but three yeah. times a day. But yeah. most people, like even in our office, I hear people talking and they're yeah. going like once a week, once every other day, something like that. It's like not that good. is not normal and that should not be happening. Yeah. And if you're feeding your body with foods that are easily digested and your your GI tract is healthy, then you, you're gonna do yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, you have much better energy. So back to your question about, well, I'm too tired to cook when I get home from work. Well, it's kind of like which yeah, comes first. That's true. So until you start making those changes, you're not gonna have the energy to do it. And then obviously it'll help with your weight. It improves your sleep. As we were talking about those chemical laden foods, those can actually excite you and then they cause you not to be able to sleep at night 
or you have like the deep dive, you're, you're so hypoglycemic. Yeah. This is another big one, which we were kind of talking about earlier, mental function and less anxiety. So the, the country is like rampantly dealing with this now, especially in kids, but also in adults. And I propose to you that it, it, a lot of it's related to their food. Yeah. And it's also related to looking at your cell phone all the time, but that's a whole other topic. And then one of the other things we're going to talk about is regulate your body temperature. If you, if you feel too hot or you feel too cold, what kinds of food should you be eating? And then obviously increases longevity and um, helps you not get disease later in life. Yeah. And then eat like an animal. So together we develop the Hauser diet and people can go on the internet at hauserdiet.com. When we started at Caring Medical, we had like Hauser diet number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Basically, some of the diets were highly carnivorous and some were vegetarian. So the notion of everybody in the world should eat the same kind of a diet is kind of ridiculous because some people live in like freezing cold Alaska and other people live in India where it's, you know, really, really hot. Some people in the United States live in a cold climate like Chicago or New York and others live in a warm climate like Texas or Florida. So tell us about the Hauser diet principles and then together with Nicole Baird we wrote a book called The Hauser Diet. Basically the the Hauser diet came about because I told you earlier that you know the the what I realized I was taught in school like wasn't working. So um, one of the key points when you're trying to figure out what way I should eat is learn how food makes you feel. And I would say most people don't think about that. No. So, you know, like you might eat a bowl of pasta for lunch and then now your head is on the desk and you're trying to work. <laughs> and Or, you know, you might eat a steak but you feel like totally bloated afterwards and that doesn't sit well with you either. Or you feel like you can eat anything and it really doesn't matter. So if you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see that we took those five diet types and they were one, two, three, four, five, but my, my roommate in undergrad was a zoo nutritionist major, so she actually uh, told me which animals eat like these five types. So just to give you a real simple way to look at it, the lion is the highest in protein and fat, lowest in carbs, and the giraffe is the highest in carbs, lowest in protein and fat. The bear is in the middle, which you know you can think of like the garbage can eater, and then otter is between, you know, the bear and the lion, and monkey is between these two we looked at blood pH and glucose tolerance test to determine how people should eat. And you and I developed this together, um, but blood pH, you have alkaline, acidic, or balanced. So alkaline, your blood pH is too high, acidic, it's too low. And then with the glucose to tolerance test, uh, people were either fast oxidized or slow or balanced. So we put these two things together and that's how we came out with the five different diet types. Everybody can understand, you know, we live in Southwest Florida, so we go to the beach, we're boiling hot. So when you're boiling hot, do you want to eat a steak or do you want to go to a vegetarian or a smoothie place? Of course you want to eat carbs. So when you're hot or you're running and you're real hot, they don't give you milk, which is high in fat. They give you what? Gatorade, which is high in carbs. So if you're somebody who is hot all the time and you've been diagnosed with like rheumatoid arthritis and you're hot all the time, well, why don't you try a vegetarian diet, gluten-free vegetarian diet. So the hot person would have alkaline blood pH. Right. So then the cold person is the one who's acidic. Yeah. And then typically the fast oxidizer of food is the more cold person, hypoglycemia, mm -hmm. and either you're balanced or slow with your glucose tolerance as for the people who need yeah. to be more vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So say we're in uh, Illinois and people would say, "Why, when I go to Florida, I feel so much better. My arthritis is better or my fatigue's better. So in other words, in Illinois, they're freezing. So they, uh, their pH changed and different things change just by being in a warm climate. So the people up in Chicago who are freezing all the time and they just are racked with pain, then be, when you're cold, like we all went skiing and you're cold, we would want to eat a steak and not go to a vegetarian place. So if you have a, if you feel cold all the time and you're fatigued or you have some symptom that you don't like, you might want to just eat more of a high protein, low carb diet. And then, you know, of course, couples are normally the opposite. So believe it or not, my energy food is fat. So I have to eat an enormous, enormous amount of fat 
to feel good and if I don't, like for instance, last night I had something carbohydrate before bed and then of course I didn't sleep as much so my energy's a little bit down where normally I would have nuts or something that was high in fat to keep me to have a good ener energy. Yeah, so, I, so I, the problem is if I eat carbs before bed, then in the middle of the night my, uh, my blood it's sugar plummets drugs. and that of course is gonna wake you up. You know, it's gonna wake you up because the body wants your blood sugar up. Mm -hmm. So anyone then again who has sleeplessness or insomnia, one of the things you should consider doing is you might have to eat some protein uh, you know, right, 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 right before mm -hmm. bed because it might be that your blood sugar is plummeting. Uh, you can go on hauserdiet.com and go to take the Hauser Diet Quiz. And the questions they're going to ask you on that are how do you feel with foods and whether you're hot or whether you're cold. So sometimes when you take the quiz for the first time, you actually don't know the answer to the questions. So yeah. if you feel like everyone that takes it comes out as a bear, that does happen. So then go like the next few days and see how you feel when you're eating food and then take the quiz. And the results will be automatically emailed to you. We often talk too that you're better off wanting flavors that are salt and sour versus sweet. So why don't you just, you know, many people out there who struggle with food, they just, they want sweet, they want sweet, well, they want you're, sweet. you're an example of right, that. Right, right. You know, those sweet. Um, right, I always grew up that way. Sugar. Right. You know, quisp cereal of, you know, I ate cereal, bowls of cereal. So. Right. Which I grew up the opposite, had yeah. savory, savory food. But, you know, sugar just isn't good for you. Right. I mean, that's the bottom line. Yeah. It, it depletes the immune system. It can lead to cancer. It can lead to diabetes, obesity, heart disease. I think sugar is actually worse for you than fat because sugar right. ends up being stored as fat. So I, I think that people who do have the sweet tooth, they need to learn how to make some of those things we were talking about earlier. Like your favorite thing that I make for you is avocado chocolate mousse, yeah, which is basically fat, like avocado pureed with uh, organic uh, cocoa powder and just a tiny bit of erythritol sweetener yeah. um, and a little bit of plant milk. And that is a something that you've been able to switch over to yeah. for, for a sweet thing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. So, you know, you, you need to find ways that you can make those changes. So in summary, you know, food should give you energy, not take away your energy. So if you, if you feel like every time you eat, you don't feel well, then you're probably eating the wrong food. Yeah. Whether it's a chemical laden food, processed food, or you're just eating the wrong macronutrients balance. Yeah. So this is the newsletter that we were talking about at the beginning. Um, where you're going to get a greeting from us, a recipe of the week, some post pro therapy information, inspirational uh, messages, and a video. So if you'd like to get that newsletter, you can uh, email drhauser at caringmedical.com. It would be our pleasure to get you on the list. And uh, if you have any topics you'd like us to talk about, we would be happy to talk about them in those newsletters. So thanks for listening.